without further ado, let's introduce our guest, very special guest. We have Diamond King in the building, ladies Hello. and gentlemen. Welcome to Elephant Pick. This is uh, my interview series. I interview people from all walks of life. Uh, I like to interview artists. I like to interview people in the nightlife. I like to interview people that just, as long as you have an interesting story, mm -hmm. I want to interview you. And you have an interesting story. I'm pretty interesting. I love yeah, I, you, 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 you stand out. <laughs> I like the outfit. Thank you. I like the outfit, so I uh, definitely standing out. Me wearing all black, I'm looking regular. But guess what? You're, it's all about you. Can you talk about the nails though? Like what's, what's going Rick on and here? Rick and Morty. Listen, I love Rick and Morty. Me too. I got them tattered on my body. Like, oh, you do. Morty over here, Rick over here. Oh, so like, it's gang for life. Period. Like oh. really, what I want, I want them to make a little character for me and just put me on the show. Like that's it. Just I think it's episode. very doable. Just one episode. That's all I want. I they, want my they, character to be performance. They have guests. <laughs> they did that with logic. I was watching an episode, and why was Rick in the lab and A Boogie was playing? Yeah, A Boogie was playing. Yep, I remember they that episode. Play, yeah. They had a uh, they had logic, the rapper, performing at the end of one episode. I'm a big Rick and Morty fan, also. Come on. So I, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely am about that life. But let's let, let's talk about it, Diamond King. Talk to me. Who is Diamond King? Diamond King. With a Q. With a Q, right? It's Q I N G, not K I N G. And I be fucking people up. They be calling me Queen. I, I, <laughs> you know, it's just like, damn. <laughs> but it is pronounced King. And that even comes from, like, I started modeling before I was rapping. And my. How tall are you? I'm 5'6. Okay. <laughs> so, and I was a really good, like, catalog model. They kind of gave me a hard time on runway because I'm kind of on the short side. For the model world, you feel me? Like, I was a midget in the model world. How tall do you have to be in the model world? A, a short girl in the model world is like 5'8. Get so out of I here. I was like a super midget. I'm five six. Oh man. <laughs> I was like a super midget, you feel me? So but um my whole thing when it came to modeling was women empowerment. Um I did a free the nipple shoot. Have you ever heard of the campaign Free the Nipple? I always say free the nipple, but maybe I, I didn't know there was a whole campaign behind it, but I, yes. I would love to know. So the campaign, um, I did the shoot in 2016, so I guess it was around that time when it was hype. Um, and basically it was just like, why is it that if a woman was to like expose her nipple online, she would get like, you know, deleted, blocked, whatever the fuck. But as, you know, a man could post no shirt on, you feel me? Like, and he's good. So it was more like a feminist movement. And I really, I jacked it because I loved it, you feel me? So I did a photo shoot and I had my little nipple or whatever and it went viral. Like, So that was your nipple on the? on the album cover or the photo the, the the single cover was that it i don't know okay <laughs> shout, shout out to the hershey kisses out here let's go <laughs> but yes uh, no because oh, yeah. I, I did see that so i was like oh okay okay i saw so, yeah with the women empowerment i call myself king but with the q because i'm a woman but king because you know like i say what i say i do what i do and what i say goes and that's just what it is and that that was, that was very harlem of you to say that we're going to talk about that because you you're, you're also from harlem mm -hmm. Were you, were you born and raised in Harlem? Yeah, Lennox Avenue. Oh, okay, so you you really about that life. Okay, oh, yeah. so I, I, I wanna I wanna get deeper into what made you start with music and stuff, but I, I wanna I gotta ask you from the top. When I speak to people from Harlem, they're always like, "Oh, East Side, West Side." So I need to know what's the first of all. Explain how they split apart, right? Uh -huh. And then also, I wanna know the differences. Can you tell an East Side Harlem person from a West Side Harlem person? Somewhat. Somewhat? Somewhat. Okay, so, so there's certain the factors. The borderline of East and West is Fifth Avenue in, um, in Harlem. So once you go from Fifth to Lenox, now you're on the West Side. And once you go from Fifth to, I think it's Park Avenue, that's now you're on the East Side. So it's a very, like, low block. You feel me from the East to the West? But I'm from the West Side. See, how, you, see how she made it know, like... <laughs> you feel me? Like, that's the best side. Period. Oh, like, okay. East Harlem is more so, like, I like to call it Spanish Harlem. Like, all the okay. Spanish people be over there. That's where they have the Puerto Rican Day Parade and stuff like you know black people do live over there you know it's wagner projects and tiny yeah. all that shit over there but that's just spanish harlem like if you have snapchat and you open and you take a picture of the snap and try to look for filters it'll say spanish harlem they don't uh, do that on the west side uh, so interesting <laughs> interesting so you could kind of tell them about okay okay mm -hmm. that's interesting so let's let's talk about how did diamond king become become diamond king like how, how did you get into the music and so it's actually really simple and kind of like so I grew up um, making poems and writing stories so expressing myself writing and speaking wasn't ever hard for me like that's what I went to anyway so I always loved music like that's always been a passion of mine but I never tried to write a song like poems is just kind of where I like ended it so um, Dreams All she has a song called I think Pull Up and big I shout was, out to Dream Doll, you know, Big Bronx rapping it on Instagram and just randomly so I was like oh you'd be a pretty rapper and I was like, hey, well, let's see about it. You feel me? So I did a freestyle to Money by Cardi B. 
and it went crazy. So I just was like, okay, let me just keep, you know, keep going. And then it just felt odd to me because it was so easy to write that freestyle. Whereas like before, I guess I was thinking about it too much and like a song just wouldn't come to me. Like the poems was just where it was at. So I don't know. It's just like I started rapping in my room and just doing the freestyles. And then people was hitting me up like, oh, you know, you should make songs. You should release songs. So then now I'm going into the studio releasing songs. But that didn't happen until two years later. Oh, okay. So, so I started officially in 2020. So you had to work the nerves. Yeah. In order to, so you were nervous to like actually make a record? Yes. Because like the thought of... But when you, I was in my room rapping, it was just me in my room. Yeah, but all right, you did the modeling stuff and there's there's people around. Like I figured... So here's a here's some little... Here's some tea. Teach I wear me. contacts. And I just got the contacts for my birthday this year, July 28th. So before that, all I wore was glasses. So anytime I was performing anything, I took my glasses off. I'm blind. I don't see anything. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of easy for me. Like when I'm on stage, all the lights are on me. The crowd is literally pitch black. I can't see them. You feel uh, me? So it was kind of easy. Okay. So so so, how do you feel about let's say like performances? Like when you have to like rap in a, in a crowd, are, do you still keep that concept, or do you feel do you feel more comfortable now? Actually, I feel like I'm happy that I came into it blind <laughs> because <laughs> it kind of helped my nerves. Because now that I can see when I perform, it's, it doesn't affect me. Like I perform in front of my parents for the first time at SOBs and I thought I was gonna be really nervous because a lot of my songs you know aren't my parent friendly you feel me like I'll be talking about my pussy and shit and it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know but I enjoyed it you know I'm looking I'm seeing them they recorded me like it just was it felt really good so I actually enjoy now being able to look at people and interact because I love crowd interactions so before I would just like randomly like point and like I hope I'm pointing to somebody <laughs> and talk to them you know yeah. but now I can actually see them and engage with people so. I think I think a lot of people um underestimate the power of knowing how to perform and controlling the crowd when you perform i think a lot of people just get up there and it's just like mm -hmm. and, and, and it's just standing there in the same place and not really not really doing anything but i want i want to regress a little bit back to harlem because I, I know i know you call yourself the king of harlem right you got the ep yes. right um give me three reasons why harlem should be its own borough why it should be yeah Period. Like, all the good looks come from there. All the baddest bitches come Woo! from there. You feel me? Like, and then it's hard. Like, it's Harlem is such a small part of Manhattan. And then we have all these other boroughs coming at Harlem. They're not coming <laughs> at Manhattan. They're coming at Harlem. Like, that's, 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 that's gangsta shit. Like, really. uh, okay, okay. <laughs> like, I th those are three viable ones. I, I, I can rock with that. I can rock with that. So, so let's talk about, let's talk about the industry. You was like, oh, I rap about my pussy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel... With the current climate of, of, of female artists and stuff, you know, I, I feel, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like a lot of the mainstream female rappers that are popping now, they talk a lot about their coochies and stuff, like, mm. all the time. So it's like, do you feel pressure to get, like, at getting into this game and, 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 you know, working your way up? Do you feel the pressure to talk about that or do you just do that freely or how exactly... So I do it freely just because, you know, I'm a woman and I have a pussy. So it's like, I'm going to talk about it. You feel me? But I also don't feel pressure to talk about it. I enjoy that my music is pretty different from a lot of people. Like when I let people listen to my music or put them onto it, they're just like, yeah, like this is different. Like I haven't heard anybody else that sounds like this. You're in your own lane and I enjoy that. But again, I'm a woman. I'm going to talk about my pussy. And I really don't <laughs> think, though, that... Is anything wrong with the fact that women do talk about their pussy so much? Like, we have vaginas. Like, niggas be talking about getting their dicks up, fucking bitches, ah, ah. So it's just like, why we can't talk about fucking y'all? You talk mm -hmm. about fucking us, you feel me? It's just like... That's so. an interesting perspective. I just, like, I guess from a male perspective, the way that I see it is like, damn, I almost feel like most female rappers are pressured into it because if they're not talking about... Something sexual is like, do people pay attention? Whereas a guy could not rap about any of that and yeah. still get the attention. So I almost feel like there's a, it's not balanced. I will say that looks and personality and everything else outside the music definitely helps. So the music, of course, like if you are like more like lyrical and you are talking about your pussy, but you a bad bitch and you got good looks and you around, you know, popping people when you in all the popping places and your your content is consistent. I don't think that that would be an issue. I feel like people would still fuck with you. If you make good music, it's good music. You feel me? Like, so it's different if you're trying to put some bullshit out there and be like, oh, well, I'm not talking about pussy. So I don't understand why it's not going big. It's just like, but is it a good song, though? You mm -hmm. know? So it's like, as long as you have good music, because let's say I have about like three or four songs and my EP is six songs, three or four songs that I don't talk my pussy at all, you know? So it's just like, but then I got a song like Cursive where I'm talking about 
right in his face. Do you have a favorite subject matter when it comes to your music? Just me right now. Um, and I am more open into like making different types of music, like heartbreak music and just other type of things. But I feel like that'll come more when I connect more so with my audience because right now I just be talking about like what the fuck I be going through and I do want to become one of those artists that just can give like or make music without having gone through it it's just because somebody else went through it and I know that they will relate to this you know but I don't really have that inspiration right now so I feel like the more that I'm in this and connecting with people I'll get that inspiration because I, I have friends that do that like they make music for their friends you know like they'd be like oh I want you to talk about this in the song because I want to play this in my car and they would go in the studio and really? make a song for them yeah Interesting. like so I wouldn't mind doing that because I'm a person I don't like suffer from like depression or anything like that but I know people that do and so it's like it's something that I have experienced so even though I personally haven't experienced it, so I can make a song about it, you know, so shit like that. How do you how do you feel about the current climate, like of New York hip hop? You know, I feel like there was a time where we're kind of like, we kind of went down and we went underground, and I kind of feel like there's a resurgence now. Like, how do you how do you feel about the current climate of of like the sound of hip hop in in, in 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 New York? I really enjoy it, and I feel like, and I don't know if this is just me being biased because I'm a woman, but I feel like the women did that. Mm. Like, cause you know, Cardi, she came and she did her thing, and then she, she kind of like opened the door for other women rappers. Period. But I feel like because she was from New York, she just really put a light on female rappers from New York. And then of course, you know, female rappers from New York is hanging out with male rappers, and you know, male rappers is doing their things too. So I feel like that really put a light on us. Like I feel like Cardi really did like, she really did sign for us. You feel me? Like, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I I, I think she's really dope, and then, you know, you can't forget about Nicki. You know, Nikki, absolutely. Um, there's, there's a lot of, uh, I, and you know, Young M.A., you know, like these, these are people that, that, that really put on for the, I'm excited to see where this is going to go. Like in, you know, uh, we, we got somebody on the come up right here, ladies and gentlemen. So we're, I'm definitely excited to see where this goes. Um, let's talk about the industry, the music industry. Mm. Right off the top, likes and dislikes. My likes is... I love how, so, so far, everyone that I've met, they've been very, like, accepting of me, and they just seem to just really enjoy my energy, and I really love that. Everyone has seemed pretty genuine, like, artist-wise, that I've met, so I really like that. I like connecting with other artists and just being as creative as I possibly can and being able to travel a lot to do work. Like, I wasn't able to really do that before until I started doing this seriously in 2020. Um, well, I saw that you had a you had a video where you were there with like Ice Spice, and there was yeah. a, there was a couple other uh, female artists in 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 that video too. So it's like, how did that come about? Like everybody just got started, like bad bitches link up, let's go. Like so, she actually Ice Spice, she had a music video for Bikini Bottom, and she had just posted like, hey, you know, I'm shooting a video this day, like if you're available. So I just you know DM'd her like, hey, I'm available. And oh she, nice. Yeah, wrote you back like, oh. His address, like that's kind of, <laughs> you there know you how that went. Yeah, we were on the party bus, um, but was so crazy though when we got off the party bus and went to go to the Red Steps on Forty Second Street. It was over. She was swarmed. I couldn't even get in. Uh, like, I was trying to get busy on the. I couldn't yeah. even. But we was lit on the party bus, so it was really a lot of fun. We was on the party bus for like thirty minutes to like forty five minutes, so it was cool. And she's real cool too. That's what's up. Um, but dislikes about the industry just people you know because it's just a lot of fake people in the industry people that are like smile in your face and talk shit behind your back or people that will tell you like oh you know i believe in you and i believe in your dream and i believe in this and then on the flip side they're really doing a lot of like snake shit i a lot I, of a lot of finesse yeah i experienced that and then it's really sad that i experienced that with somebody that i like i trusted you feel me like the person that kind of helped me break into this because I will always give him his flowers for, you know, breaking me into this and giving me the, how do I say, the experiences and the knowledge that I have so far. Because before I started working with him, I was naive. Like, I didn't know anything except for putting a song out, you know? And mm. then I learned now working with him that music is just like this much of the industry. It's yeah. so much, you feel me? Yeah. So he did teach me that and I, you know, I'm appreciative of that. But it's just like once everything was said and done... It's like he was taking credits for things that he shouldn't have, mm. taking money where he shouldn't have. He was, you know, so it's just like, damn. And then that was from somebody that was, like I said, broke me into this. So I was trusting him. I was behind him. You feel me? And it's just like, 
so I could it, it, It's tough. I know you were signed, or, or are you still signed? There's a, I forgot the, the, the name of the record, Throne Music. Mm -hmm. um, are you are you independent? Are you signed to them? Or like, what's the... So I'm not signed to Throne Music anymore. Okay. I do have another situation in the works, but until it's like... Fingers crossed, we're right, going to stay quiet. Until it's set in stone. I won't really talk on it yet. But um, my contract with Throne Music was just for the year. Okay. Um, and they're also an independent label, like I was an independent artist. So that's why I really wanted to work with them because they still allowed me to have my creative freedom and I was still able to be Diamond King and do my thing. They kind of just like powered it. So mm. I, I enjoy that. And I still have a very great relationship with the CEO of Throne Music. Nice. Mm. So the, the, the business, I'm glad that you said that because I think that's really important for people to understand. Like the, the, the artistry is this much and the business is this much. So you have to know what you're stepping into. Mm -hmm. And there's a, I don't know if you saw, there was a there was a video that kind of went viral of, uh, I don't know if you know who Russell is, but um, he's an independent artist and he was about to get signed to Rock Nation mm -hmm. and they handed it, he was talking in, in this video, I'm, I'm gonna play it for you. Um, he was talking about how he got a contract mm -hmm. And in that contract, they, they try to get him for like $10,000. Like the, the full contract was like $10,000. It was an X amount of albums. But all he was getting was like $10,000. So like he read it. And he was like, wait a minute. What is this? Right. So then when he read it, and he was like, yo, well, this, ain't, this ain't the numbers that we talked about. He was like, oh, wait, that's the wrong contract. Rock Nation did this to him. Mm -hmm. So now I want, I want to play this for you. Rock Nation, man, they just did some funny shit. They sent me an offer, and the first one was the terms, but then it had no money attached to it. It was just a $15,000 discretionary fund. You're going to deliver these projects under these terms, 10% 360, 15K discretionary fund. That's yours. I went to the office. They're like, what you think? What you going to do? And I'm like, bruh, where's the money? <laughs> like, where, where are the numbers? Right? He's like, what you mean? And I, I'm like, bro, it's only 15K. And uh, he's like, oh, no, no, no. This ain't it. He makes a call. He's like, yo, it ain't no numbers on the offer. They sent a new offer in like 30 seconds. The new offer was much larger. But by that time, I was turned off. If I would have signed this 15K, would you have told me you made a mistake? And then you made a $750,000 mistake? I don't want to do business with niggas who make mistakes that big. You gonna fuck my <laughs> business up. Right? right? But right. I just felt like that was hella slimy and it wasn't a great representation. And that's why I was like, I got to holla at Hov because I, I got, do you know your niggas moving like this? Yes, right. And if you do, I see, it's good. It's good. I, I see you, but I just felt, it felt disrespectful. And everybody goes with the, oh, it's just business and whatever. And if it was truly a mistake, I don't want to do business with a nigga who makes $750,000 worth of a mistake. If that's I own the company and a nigga make it, <laughs> I'd be upset. Yeah. You lost a generational talent. And if it wasn't a mistake, you lost generational talent trying to play, trying to yeah. see if a nigga was going to bite the bait of just the name first. I don't think that you should take it personal because you don't know how many other artists. But uh, so yeah, now now that you saw it, mm -hmm. I want to know like how you felt, how you feel about that situation, and 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 yeah, pretty much how you feel about it. Like that's part of the business, right? Very important part of the business. Mm -hmm. It definitely, I, I wouldn't feel like that was a mistake <laughs> for one. Uh -huh. And then also, I kind of feel like when you are a rookie and when you're new to this. So when they feel like you just aren't smart about shit or that you're just doing this just for some type of money, they'll they'll definitely try to play with you. Like me, I'm in this for longevity, you feel me? So it, I don't mind doing like favors right now and networking with people right now. And you know, everything is not about the bread right now, you know, because I'm trying to do this for the long haul. But then there's some people, they'll be like, oh, I'm ready to sign you right now for $2 million. And all you got out is one song. And some people will sign that, you feel me? Because it, it looks. Like, exactly, and then they'll be <laughs> fucked up, you, yeah, you know? Big so, time. Yeah, and and there's major artists to this day that they're complaining about the records that they signed, the 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 the, the contracts that they signed years ago, mm -hmm. and it's like it's finally coming to a head. Like you didn't do your due diligence. Like, but then again, it's a catch twenty two, right? Because it's like you're messed up for putting out this contract for me to sign, but at the same time, it's also therefore you're not reading it. Yeah. So you know it, it 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 it's tricky and 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 I'm glad that you know that's something that you always got to keep in mind as you ascend and and just have always have your own lawyer. That's something that I realized too. So I'm gonna look at the cameras. You gotta have your own lawyer. Like I fucked up. Not the homies' lawyer. lawyer. Not the not the labels' lawyer. Not your manager's lawyer. You yeah. need to have your own lawyer and an entertainment lawyer. You feel me? Like because it's different shit. Like I learned that when I was going through the bullshit with who I thought I could trust. You feel me? And I had to start talking to lawyers 
and shit like that. I'm talking to someone and they're just like, yeah, okay, so I am a lawyer. I can help you with this, but you're going to need an entertainment lawyer. And it's just like, oh, I didn't even know it was different. Yeah. You know, so it's like you really got to educate your shit, yourself on this shit. You feel me? So, yeah, but I'm happy, like, that I went through that. Oddly. <laughs> no, because, because it's, like, it's a learning. It's, exactly. It's a, it's a learning experience. Exactly. My my mentor, um, DJ Self, he he told me he told me it's kind of a monopoly when it comes to entertainment lawyers. Like there's only like six to ten of them that that like really stepped up and like are doing everybody's contract. So it's like it's tricky because it's like by then you think like yo the label's gotten gotten to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it it, it could be a tricky thing. So I let I, to end this part, I wanna. What would you say is the most important thing for people to know if they're about to get signed or they're looking to get signed? What would you say? Definitely everything that you want as an artist that has to be said. And I also don't think you should settle for anything unless it makes sense. You feel me? Like, of course, like I'm not saying like, you know, go in there and tell them that you want five million because you feel like you, you know, you're worth that. But it's just like, as long as it makes sense and don't allow anybody to lowball you, especially when you know what you bring to the table. Because a lot of times, like the work that we may have out is not all that we bring to the table. And you feel me? And some people know that. Some people know how far they can go. Some people know that they can go even further, even though they may not see it right now. So it's just like, don't lowball yourself, you know, and don't settle for less. For Interesting. Her. So I, um, I want to talk about your music. I want to talk about you have the EP out. Well, it came out 2021. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's talk about future projects. Let's talk about your favorite song. Which what? Talk to me all about. Let's talk about the music. Let's go. Let's do this. Yeah. So for the EP, I really only wanted to put that out because it's like an introduction to Diamond King, who is King of Harlem. Available Apple Music, Spotify, all the stuff. Everywhere. You got to plug that. Everywhere. Absolutely. Everywhere. King of Harlem, and that's Q I N G of Harlem. It's on Hello. all the platforms. Okay. <laughs> um, I have one music video out for it. Um, Damn with Ken the Man, and I will say that is one of my favorite songs, just because we had so much fun making that. Like she's so cool. It sounds fun. It sounds mm -hmm. like. The, the energy of the record sounds fun. But my top one is MVP. And oh, I okay. love MVP because I feel like I'm the MVP. But I literally made that song specifically for 2K. Okay? So when y'all mm. hear this. <laughs> mm. Put that song on 2K24. Play it over and over <laughs> and over and over. But that, that's what's up. So MVP yeah. is the record that you like the most. Mm -hmm. Out of all the records you've ever done. Or you're specifically talking about the EP. Just the the EP specifically, because we also did put Bluff on um, the EP. Bluff had got two million streams. That's my hello. Talk about it. Right, that Talk about it. Let's go. That. And that was before I had even signed, so that was that was really cool for me. Um, and I really do love Bluff, but it's just so short. It's one of those songs that make you want to play it like five times back to back. And yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. But, yeah, it's really MVP for me. But then, I don't know. I, I love Put It Down. <laughs> like, I'm gonna play all the <laughs> I love Put It Down because that's a different, that was real different for me. Like, everybody's so used to hearing me, like, turned up and lit and then Put It Down is like a love song, kind of. Like, me professional. Put you in a, in a different, in a different mm -hmm. element. Yeah. Hey, so. but the people want to hear that too, you know? Mm -hmm. Like we talked about, right? It can't, it can't always be like, pussy rap right like it, it could be a, like the, the 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 being able to switch it up right i think it's very important to, right. to diversify your portfolio if you if you will exactly. so let's talk about future projects what what do we have in store i know you have a single out now yeah soak in the street yes that you're like on top of a sign or something like that i think the, for the photo what is it yeah i was on top of, top of lennox huh <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> period the west side the best side like I uh, the all right weird. that's another thing about harlem right all right Everybody says first, second half, third half. No, y'all like, all right, this is Lennox. This is uh, Park. This is like, why, why no, do y'all do that? No, second and third half is real. But, but y'all like, <laughs> name it by like the actual names. Like, yeah, every, every, people be confused. Like, like, all right, I'm on, let's say I'm on Park. And I'm oh, like, like, when I say 7th Avenue, but that's really like, yes, that, that you, it, you, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, yo, what, it, it confuses me. I don't know. Maybe that's just a, a Harlem thing. I don't, I don't know. God. Yeah, to be very honest with you, I can't even tell you why it's like that. Unless just the way it is. it like one, two, three, four. Maybe that's why they call it that. But I don't know. Because it's like first, second, third Avenue. Yeah, I, I, it's just I, I've, I've noticed that about, about. But Lennox anyways, I digress. I digress. Let's talk about the upcoming projects. Let's talk about the single that's out now. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as upcoming projects go, 
I'm not sure yet if I'm ready to buckle down for a project or if I just want to just continue just putting out music. Because to be very honest with you, the King of Harlem, like you said, was from 2021. So it's like, mm, I kind of Streets like, is waiting. Right, like beasting to give y'all another body of work. But then I feel like I can put out singles a little more faster while I'm working on the body of work. So I'm not going to do like an album or nothing next because I feel like the album is really like my heart and soul is going to go into that. So that's I feel like yeah, your heart and soul goes into everything, no? No, it is. But I okay. feel like King of Harlem is more so like a, even though I'm talking about myself, it's more so like turn up. You feel me? Like those are songs that you can listen to like while you're getting ready to go out. You feel me type shit where I feel like the album, whenever I decide to buckle down and make it, I'm gonna really like get into it. Like the childhood, mm. father. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be a book, it's gonna be a story. Yeah, you feel me? Like, cause I don't, I haven't made any songs yet about like heartbreak or anything, you know, and I've experienced a few. So, oh man, don't we all? What's what's so <laughs> right. what's the what's one of the most important things you've learned from the heartbreaks that you've experienced in your life? Ooh, most impor- important thing I learned honestly was lessons about myself. Like I learned that I was like a person that was really quick to make sure that somebody else was good and somebody else was, you know, okay and everything was all right with them even if I wasn't. You know, and that isn't good. Like, when you're in a relationship, you have to make sure your partner's good, too. But you have to make sure you're good as well. Because how I'm going to be there for you and not there for myself, you feel me? Like, pouring into glasses and emptying my cup. Like, I was doing that. And I had to learn that about myself. So now it's like I still give. And I'm still a very, you know, giving person and all. But it's like I know my limits. And I'm not naive. And I won't wear myself thin just to help somebody out. You feel me? Like, because people got to understand, like, we all human. We all got our own lives, our own problems and shit like that. You feel me? So it's like, I can be there for you, but... To an extent, if it's taken too much from me, you know? So I learned that about myself. Uh, uh, A famous rapper, female rapper, once said, how you gonna win when you ain't right within? Come on, Lauren. Uh, Okay, just making sure you knew. Just making sure you knew, because I was gonna fill away if you didn't know who said that. (laughs) But nah, that's what's up. So (laughs) you, you, you put up a tweet. Um, I don't know exactly how long ago, but you, 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 you announced new music is coming, and you said 2023 is the reign of king. Period. What does that mean? Talk that to me. It means that I'm not playing. Like, I feel like last year I took more so of, like, a break. Because Talk of the Streets came out in, like, October, November-ish, which is, like, all the way at the end of the year. So the year had passed. But I was dealing with, you know, bullshit from that previous situation that I was in, you know. So I just took a a really long time to just get myself together, get the business back together, because I went um, a few months, too, without a manager. So I had to just, you know, figure out what it was that I wanted to do, because I didn't get discouraged after the bullshit, like, oh, yeah, like, I'm done with music, I'm over it. But I had to figure out how to do it now by myself. Cause starting and the right into way. It, right. Starting into it in 2020, I had just started with my old manager. He had a whole team, you feel me? So... I just was going, and now it's like, damn, by myself. So it's like, I am I gotta upload the songs, I gotta make the cover photo, I gotta book the, you know, music video, shit like that. So I had to get back into the groove of things, which is why Talk of the Streets came out so late. But now, you know, we in the new year, and it's like, I'm trying to drop at least two to three songs a month. Mm, like, that's a lot. I know. So you gotta think about it, right? Like, at the end of the year, right? So you're looking at 20 plus records, 20, 24 if we're being technical and one of each song like to two to three one of each I want to make a music video for because music videos are my thing yeah. like, I really love them the fact that I only have one music video for the EP I hate it <laughs> like no, I, I love music videos I feel like the songs because anybody can relate to the songs how they relate to it and they can you know create whatever storyline you know how they relate to the song but then once I make the music video you get to see how I put the song together you know like so I really like yeah. and, and it's important for the people to see your face Right. You know, like the people want to see if they're going to buy into you and they're going to believe in what it is that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. They got to see the face. Right. So that's what you meant by the reign of king. Yeah. Just I the just, music. I, yeah, it's going to be everywhere. Your like. tweets are fire, by the way. I, I was very interested. Like a lot of the random shit you say, I'd be like, <laughs> what? Thing, it'd be so random. People don't be on my. Follow on Twitter. I, yes, <laughs> Twitter is the personal. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. We're going to get them on the Twitter. Let them know the so Twitter. That's why I be on there. <laughs> yeah, but yo, that's what people want. That's what people are interested in. <laughs> yeah. I ain't going to lie. When I saw the tweets, I felt like a creep because I was like stalking your Twitter. <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, yo, this, this, this is very entertaining. Like, I know I'm going to have a great conversation with him. Mm-hmm. So, King Diamond, that's my Twitter. So instead of Diamond King, it's King Diamond, Q-I-N-G, Diamond. Yeah. That's we be a... lit on there. I talk mad shit. Yes, <laughs> yes, you do. But it, but it, but it's very, it's very entertaining. Yeah. So you gave me the, the, the game plan for 2023. Now, where do you see Diamond King in five years? 
Ooh. I love and hate that question only because I feel like, like right now, if I was to say what I feel I can be doing in five years, I would be like giving myself like the short end of the stick. Like there's so much I feel like I can do in five years shit that I can't even imagine. Well, what's what's one of your major goal in to accomplish in five years? I want a Grammy. Mm. I want a couple Grammys. Actually. Oh, okay. Oh, my fault. It went from right. one to whoop. You feel me? My name is Diamond, so I need Diamond Plaque. Mm. Right. You That's know? that makes sense. Period. And it's yeah. very it's very possible. You just stick. You just keep your head to the ground and keep working. Mm -hmm. And anything is possible. So Diamond King with a Q. Don't not with no K. Come on, right? Don't play with it. Big facts. Now, <laughs> let's let's play a game of Would You Rather. Okay. So you ready? I'm ready. Got a couple questions. Would you rather? Mm. All right. Well, you kind of answered the first one already, but I'm gonna still ask you anyway. Mm. Rick and Morty or SpongeBob? Oh, Rick and Morty. Easy landslide, like in no competition. No competition. What do you like about Rick and Morty so much? Rick is my uncle and Morty's my cousin. Damn, family I tell ties. That That's all deep. the time. That guy, yo, but, but Rick is Rick is an you asshole. Know, he, he's a genius, and I feel like I'm a genius. So I feel like he is me, and I am him. But he, but he's you a see dick. See the white lab coat that I have on. Today? Oh, I see Come what you're on. doing. But would you, all right, my, my, the biggest trait that I've gotten from Rick, besides him being a genius, he's a mm -hmm. dick. He is. He's, he's a jerk. So like, you identify with that too, like. I honestly don't identify with that. Okay, I was about to say, because he... <laughs> I feel like he is a dick to everybody, but the people he care about, he care about. Come on now. In a weird way. In a weird way. But that's his way. Period. Let's continue. All right. <laughs> so now let's talk about liquor. Mm -hmm. Tequila or cognac? What do, you, what do you like to drink? So I'm actually more of a smoker than a drinker, but when I do drink, I like dark. So it could be cognac or whiskey. Yes! Yo, I feel like everybody drinks tequila nowadays. It's crazy. Uh, that light liquor, man, I wake up with a hangover. I could have a shot and still wake up with a hangover. How? And dark, like dark, dark got you on a level. Yo, I wake up happy. Chilling. Making breakfast. Are you happy drunk, angry drunk? What are, what are you? I'm pretty happy. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, <laughs> like, a, I'm, a, I'm a smiling drunk too. Yeah. Right, so. Dancing and shit. Okay. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I know you're 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 an artist in many different facets of that word, and that word is just such a big umbrella. But mm -hmm. drawing or painting, what do you like more? Oh, so I really do love to draw. But for Christmas, my best friend got me some canvases and some um, acrylic paints. Yeah, so I saw that on Twitter. Been, I saw that. I've actually been on YouTube searching how to acrylic paint. So soon, I will be painting, but I love to draw. Drawing is number mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And was that a self-portrait that you did? In the, in the, I saw... I love the fact that you think it was me because I wanted it to be me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. That's how I was, I was, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so drawing yeah. is for now. Mm -hmm, for now until we learn okay mm -hmm. so now uh would you i saw i saw that you had the 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 what i think that's the the gay flag the lgbtq mm -hmm. flag you had that there so now my question to you is do you like your girls petite thick slim like how do you how do you like them I just like pretty girls. Pretty girls, doesn't matter. Yeah, that's it. Like, I just like pretty girls. Okay, me per me personally, I like petite. I like mm -hmm. petite with a, gotta have a cute face. The cute face is necessary, you feel me? Because she can uh, okay. lose weight, she can gain weight. Uh, okay. She can be naked, she can have clothes on, she can have no hair. She can, she can free the nipple, right? Period. <laughs> like, well, the face is pretty, the okay. face is pretty. Like, I love a pretty So, face. so like, body done or natural? Natural, for sure. Natural gang. Yo, you saying a lot of the things that I like. I I knew I knew I messed with you, yo. Uh, so now if you had to pick, this is the last one. Mm. If you had to pick one profession, right? Mm. Being a famous rapper, right? Mm. Or being being the most famous rapper or being the most famous interior designer of all time. Ooh. Which Damn. one would it be? Because I know you like interior yeah. design. <laughs> Um, okay, see, this is a good one. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, shit. Look at you. I'm, I'm glad I got you <laughs> stuck there. Because you got to think about some fly ass, like. Right. I will say famous rapper only because I'm really a people's person. And even as an interior design artist, I'll still be able to connect with people and things like that. I feel as an artist, it's a broader audience you feel me like instead of me just working with two or three people at a time you know i can connect to about a thousand people at once you know so 
Maybe music. Yeah? yeah. It's not like you're not too, not too sure of that. <laughs> yeah, I just love interior design. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> that was good, yeah. Yeah, good. I, I'm glad. Who knows? Maybe, you know, after you get your, your diamond plaque, you feel like designing your own crib, and there you go. Yo, you do your I own thing. I was thinking about having, like, a business. Why not? You feel me? But the thing is, though, I want to be the one. <laughs> you want to be the one I there? I want to be the one there, right? <laughs> yeah, how, how's that going to work? Oh, <laughs> shit, that's multi-platinum artist, Diamond King, and she's, de she's decorating my crib. Like You know, unless they, like, send me the blueprints and I make it up myself and the team goes and do it how I envision it, but it's like, I want to be there. You want to be there? But you can, still, you can still yeah. do it, but maybe not to, the, like, the call me up and, right. you know, that. <laughs> and I'm a come there, I got you. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, ladies and gentlemen, okay. round of applause for Diamond King in the building. But you know I'm not I'm not done with you yet, Diamond King. Mm -hmm. You know we need some bars. You know that. You know you from West Harlem, right? Uh -huh. Hello. Hello. We need bars. Elephant pick, we out here. Diamond King. Peace. <laughs>